ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, defines a life cycle as the following. Consecutive and interlinked stages of a product or service system, from raw material acquisition or generation from natural resources to final disposal. Note that the term product also includes services. This is a special definition of product used by ISO in these circumstances. That is, environmental management systems. So, for example, anything talking about a product system refers to both product systems and service systems. The life cycle is a very useful model. It allows organizations to properly consider all of the environmental aspects of the things they make or the things that they do. It plays a central role, for example, in ISO 14001 systems, as it provides a reference framework for tracking time periods or allocating material flows, things like that. Now, here's the interesting part. Let's say you and I are on opposite sides of the globe, but we want to make a product. Each of us want to create the same identical product. Only you're going to create it from where you operate with what's available to you. I'm going to create it from where I am with what's available to me. And so here's what's important. Even if our product is global, the life cycles of our two identical products will probably not be the same. Even though we have access to all the same suppliers, all the same resources, how those things get to our office door, how they get to our manufacturing floors, that is what will be different. Or consider this, I might have more transportation infrastructure on my landmass, so distribution is easier, it's more efficient, it uses less energy per unit than yours, but maybe recycling is much better where your company is located. You know, there's recycling alliances, take-back schemes, streamlined material flows, things like this, and maybe my country isn't as sophisticated when it comes to handling the end of the product's useful life. All of these things considered in the life cycle model once you start breaking them down into these component parts and considering them discreetly, we're starting to talk about life cycle assessments, LCAs. That is, what does our product's life cycle look like in a more objective sense? Now, it's not to say that you can do an assessment on your life cycle and I do one on mine and that can tell whose is better. It's not that simple. The analyses used in LCA are relative, so while the assessments can be used for comparisons, it's only in specific circumstances and with proper disclaimers. LCAs are better used as tools to create meaningful metrics from the mountain of data you tend to collect as a product manufacturer. Things like supply chain info, uh, your distribution network, or the end of life or disposal outlets for your product. These can all be considered in a standardized way if you use life cycle assessments. So what sort of standard are we talking about? Well, once again, we have a very well respected framework that comes to us from ISO, this time in the form of the 14040 family of standards. They are themselves part of the ISO 14000 family and saw their first revisions released in the late 90s, early 2000s. What was once five documents was distilled into two, with the release of ISO 14040 and 14044 2006. These have since seen some amendments, but these are the same versions that we still use today, essentially. These standards help us quantify the environmental aspects of a product over the entire range of its life cycle. Now, there's a bit of overlap with these documents, but essentially, ISO 14040 outlines the principles and the framework of a life cycle assessment. What it is, what it's used for, uh, how the different parts of the model look like, and how they work together. ISO 14044, on the other hand, looks at the process in more depth, the requirements and the guidelines um, this document shows you how to carry out an LCA properly, what procedures should be followed, uh, who should be getting involved, and what their role should be. In this video series, we'll be taking a look at the ISO 14040 and 14044 standards in some detail. Understanding these resources goes a long way to understanding your own product better. How it gets made, how it gets to your clients, and how it's handled after it's finished being used. 
All of these in the context of a product environmental management system. I'm Jamie Frenocumbo with EnviroPass. Thanks for watching.